Wrecked economy, recession, food shortages got you down? Well, you're in luck. Well, not really. Welcome back, Hacks Maniacs. Today, I want to talk to you about what I believe is one of the ultimate survival foods to help you get through tough times. Remember a couple years ago before everything went crazy and you could just go to the grocery store? Hey! I'm trying to film here. And you could get anything you wanted because it was actually on the shelf. Once Kim and I saw what was going on with the food supply chain, we made the necessary changes to make sure that we had a large cache of emergency food. It's a homestead or backyard survival food, an existential part of a prepper pantry, and it's a superfood. It does, however, require some pre-planning. Behold, the incredible edible chicken. You thought I was going to say egg, didn't you? Well, I was, but as we all know, the, the chicken comes before the egg. I'm pretty sure. More on chickens in a minute. But first, let's talk about these amazing semispherical, nutrient-dense superfoods. They're easy to store for long periods of time when done correctly. I'll show you how later. And they're packed with vitamins and minerals. They are, in fact, a perfect protein, meaning they contain all nine essential amino acids that allow our bodies to make full use of the protein in an egg. On average, an egg contains about six grams of protein and 70 calories. Can't live on eggs alone, but man, they can get you a long ways. Because eggs are so protein rich, they help you feel full and satisfied. Get in my belly! They also contain the antioxidants lutein and zeaxanthin. I think I said that right. As we grow older, our eyesight tends to worsen and these antioxidants help prevent that. Did you know that the 100 pleats in a chef's hat used to represent the 100 ways to prepare an egg? It's pretty jiggy. That means you're less likely to get tired of eating the same thing over and over again. Forget about store-bought eggs though. They're great, but they aren't the best way to use eggs in an at-home survival or crisis situation. Besides, grocery store eggs cost at least twice as much as they did at the end of 2020. So much for 8% inflation. Math on camera can be hard, but I'm pretty sure that's 100% inflation. You're gonna want your own personal egg dispenser. In fact, you're gonna want several. But before we get into aspects of you forging ahead with your own feathered and festooned flock of friendly food pooping fowl, let's talk about how to store the fruits brought forth from said foraging and fertile flock. What did you say? We are in fact about to put the carriage before the horse or the egg before the chicken. Henceforth and for the duration of this video, unless noted, all egg references shall refer to farm or backyard eggs. Fresh, unwashed eggs can last several weeks at room temperature or several months in the refrigerator. Washed eggs have to be stored in the refrigerator though. Now, I mentioned earlier that eggs could be stored for a long time and I'll get there in just a second. But first, what's the difference between washed and unwashed eggs? Well, I'm glad I asked. When a hen lays an egg, she leaves a protective coating of protein called the bloom or cuticle on the egg. That seals the porous shell. This bloom prevents bacteria from entering the egg as well as preventing moisture from escaping. Now, I've seen people list fresh backyard eggs for sale on Facebook and actually say they've been washed. That is no bueno. If you ever buy farm fresh eggs, make sure you ask if they have been washed and make sure you trust the person you're asking. You should leave the bloom on as a barrier until you are ready to cook the eggs. A lot of people just wipe them off, but we wash and dry them off right before we use them. The main concern some people have with farm fresh eggs is the fear of salmonella. <coughs> Store-bought eggs are pasteurized and that makes them safe and free from bacteria, right? <coughs> Wrong. There have been tons of recalls on grocery store eggs for salmonella and other diseases over the years, so that is clearly not a guarantee of safety. Bacteria finds a way, cross-contamination and such. If chickens are kept in a clean environment, the chances of getting a bad egg are slim to none. According to the American Egg Board, the average consumer might encounter a contaminated egg once every 84 years. I like those odds. My favorite and truthfully the ultimate way to store eggs long term is a freeze dryer. It is an investment though, so I'll show you an alternative dirt cheap way to store eggs long term in a minute. The pros of freeze drying eggs is they can last 30 years when sealed. They are super lightweight and they're easy to store because they're so space saving. I mean, there's 20 eggs in this little package right here. This also makes them great for bugging out or just camping. I digress though. Let's reconstitute and cook up these freeze dried eggs. I'm just gonna make those over here 
while I tell you about Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic company. They have options for every lifestyle, keto and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. We try to be as self-reliant as possible, but we also stay crazy busy making these videos. So doorstep delivery gives us a reprieve and allows us to skip the grocery store, which I hate going to. Tonight, we are gonna have some blackened chicken cutlets and grits. Let's check out the ingredients. The pre-portioned ingredients and pre-made sauces make cooking fast and easy, even for an idiot like me. It's important for us so that our girls eat good, healthy food, and these meals support a healthy lifestyle, and bonus, they are freaking delicious. We haven't had one meal from them that didn't taste like we had a personal chef come and cook it for us. Because you Hacks Maniacs are so awesome, you can use my code HACKSMAN135 to get $135 off across five boxes, plus free shipping on your first box. Go to greenchef.com for more details. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, if you don't want to freeze dry eggs at home, you can purchase pre-packaged freeze dried eggs, and I highly recommend you do. But from what I've seen, they don't taste the same as when you make them at home. Replace tasty with palatable. These freeze dried eggs taste exactly like fresh eggs. I mean, there is zero difference in flavor. Taste these. Good? <laughs> here, 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 Kim. Taste some more, taste some more. Freeze dryer retains all of the nutrients that the eggs have in them. You don't lose anything. Would you like to store eggs for 12 to 18 months? Yes. Would you like for it to be ridiculously simple and dirt cheap? Yes! Yes, yes! Well, friends, have I got a plan for you because water glassing is a method that has been around since the early 1800s. All you need is water, fresh, clean, no dirt, no poop eggs, and they must have the bloom on them. And pickling lime, or as it's also called, hydrated lime or calcium hydroxide. All you do is place the eggs in a jar or a bucket It. Don't do that. Then you add one ounce of lime per quart of water. Just make sure there are two inches of the lime water mixture above the eggs when you're finished. That's it. These will last at least one year to 18 months or more but just be sure you put a date on them so that you do remember when you glassed them. So how do you know whether an egg is good or bad? The egg decator can tell the difference between a good egg and a bad egg. Probably a lot of people know this, but if you don't, here you go. All you need is a glass of water. Take the egg, drop it in the top, gently. And if the egg falls to the bottom of the glass, that egg is still good. This egg, I suspect is bad. Let's find out. Uh, it's standing on its end. So when an egg, is it standing on its end? Mm -hmm. It is. So when it stands on its end and you see how it kind of eh, thought about it, whether it wanted to drop or not, that means this egg is not particularly fresh, but it is still safe to eat. That is a dirty egg. Let's see what happens. Ah, oh, there we go. We got a wiener. So as you can see, this egg obviously is floating, and that, my friends, is what you call a bad egg. Let's see what this egg looks like inside. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of disappointed. I thought it was gonna be nasty looking. You can see here though, look at this weird texture it has. Like that's not normal when you go into the yolk for it to be, I don't know, it's almost plasticky. That's, that is kind of gross, actually. Another way to tell if an egg has gone bad, although I don't think it's as accurate, is to shake the egg. Oh. And if you hear it sloshing around, that egg is bad. Let's see. It worked. She was a bad egg. Another benefit of having eggs around is the egg whites can be used to treat burns. Now, you do your own research on this and make up your own mind. Some experts advise against this because you could be introducing bacteria. But 
This method has been used for hundreds of years. And in fact, Kim used it one time when she burned her wrist really bad on the oven and she put egg whites on it and it took, you know, I guess you'd say it took the heat out of it and it healed uh, really nicely. So take that for what it's worth. Now, if you want a constant flow of eggs, you're gonna need some chickens. I'll do a quick rundown of what you can expect before you start your brood. Ah, you get my finger! First off, they are extremely easy to care for in the sense that they require almost no care. And there are many different breeds of chickens. Some are bred for eating, some are bred for laying eggs. Now, chickens, ow! Chickens bred for meat are called broilers. We don't bother with broilers, ow! Now, this one, she's like blind in one eye. Uh, she's like trying to eat my finger. She is the friendliest chicken though that we have. Please, please hit the grape. Hit the, please. We don't raise broilers. They certainly have their place, but it ain't here. Now, you can keep your chickens in a coop or you can let them free range. Even if you let them free range, you need at least a small coop for them to go in at night. I mean, technically you don't, but you should. I actually have a video of that and I'll post that video up here of us building our coop slash tractor last year. Now you may be concerned about the smell from chickens. If you've ever driven past chicken farms, you know how bad that can be. We basically do zero maintenance and we have zero smell. We learned this method from Justin Rhodes. You just put about four inches of untreated wood chips in the bottom of the coop and the chickens will scratch their poop into the wood chips, breaking the chips down in a compost that we, you know, we clean it out maybe once or twice a year and put in our garden. I don't know the magic behind it. All I can say is it works amazingly well and has no smell. Now here's why you have to pre-plan. Chickens won't start laying eggs until they are four to eight months old. And they do kind of go through cycles where they won't lay as often and they just stop for a short period of time and then they start back. They also lay fewer eggs as they grow older. So it's good to have a variety of ages. We let our chickens free range during the day and they come back to the coop at night. We do this for a few reasons. First, it lets them live their best chicken life. Second, it makes the cost of feeding them go way down. We really don't have to give them any chicken feed, but Kim does though as a treat and you know, just to supplement what they pick out of the yard. Plus it's kind of fun to have them come up and eat out of your hands as you saw. Now, if you keep them cooped up, just know that the cost of feeding them could be as much or more than buying eggs, but it's still worth it in my opinion. The only other thing they need is water. Now, if you let your chickens free range, make sure they have some place to take cover from birds of prey. Uh, we have a lot of bushes here that they go under. They also go into the woods over here. We did lose one chicken to a peregrine falcon. We look at it as though we're letting that chicken live as natural a life as possible. And in doing that, there are certain inherent risks. That is why you should never name your chickens. Carla, Pickles, Echo, Sweet Cheeks, Satan, the rooster. Did I say Patricia already? If you're gonna keep chickens in a neighborhood, you probably don't want a rooster. Uh, they can be loud and they can be annoying and they can be uh, aggressive as well. Is that one right there is. If you want to keep replenishing your chickens without having to buy more though, obviously you're going to need a rooster. If you have dogs and are concerned about whether they will kill your chickens, let me just say these two lunatics with super high prey drive wanted to kill our chickens for several months. We just made, <laughs> we just made sure they never got the chance. After many months of letting them have you know, more exposure to each other, they eventually learned that the chickens were part of the family and now the chickens can come and eat right beside the dogs. Uh, one of the chickens will even pull food from Storm's mouth. Fish in a barrel. <laughs> they give you food, they give you compost, they provide entertainment. What more could you want? Chickens and eggs are a great part of a long-term food security plan, but watch this video right here. Watch this video right here and I'll show you the forever food you need to stock up on to round out your plan. Thanks for watching.